What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with my unboxing and review of the Google Nexus 10. So this joins the Nexus 4 and Nexus 7, which now gives us a complete range of Nexus devices to pick from. So Nexus means that Google has worked closely with the manufacturer to design hardware that meets their specifications, in this case, Samsung. Now, this also gets the latest version of Android without all of the fillers and skins and that sort of thing that get in the way of the pure Android experience. So you can always count on these devices to get the latest version of Android. Now, the Nexus 10 is aimed squarely at the iPad with Retina display, and it has the specs and pricing to take it on. So we have two capacities to pick from, 16 and 32 gig, starting off at $399 or $499. So that's $100 cheaper than the iPad. Now, unlike most Android tablets, there is no SD expansion in this case. So you have to choose your capacity wisely, although you probably can get by with 16 gig unless you store a lot of photos, movies, and um, music. Now, unlike the iPad, there is no cellular version here, at least at the time of filming, but one may show up later like it did with the Nexus 7. Now, spec-wise, we have a dual-core 1.7 gigahertz Exynos 5 processor and two gigs of RAM. But the most interesting spec here is the display resolution, which we'll talk about once we get it booted up. Now, all Nexus devices have very similar packaging, so you kind of have a black box with a sleeve you have to pull off, and we just have to cut some seals. And inside the box, we'll find our plastic wrap Nexus 10 on the top, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Also in the box is the standard array of accessories. This includes a micro USB charging cable. We also get a quick start guide and some warranty information. And we get a USB wall adapter with a removable plug, so you can either change the adapter depending on where you are in the world, or you can add an extension cable. Now getting back to the Nexus 10, there are two pieces of plastic on the back, one covering the removable accessory panel and another covering the body. On the front, we also have another piece of plastic covering the glass, which is a Gorilla 2 glass panel, which is scratch resistant and pretty durable. Now the design of the Nexus 10 is different than most tablets. So instead of a straight sided tablet with rounded corners, the Nexus 10 kind of has a slight curve to the edges. We also have a very textured rubbery plastic material on the back, which is very grippable, but it also tracks a lot of fingerprints and it's kind of hard to keep clean. Now on the back, we also find our camera, which is a five megapixel camera with all the focusing. We also have an LED flash and the microphone nearby. This is good for 1080p video at 30 frames per second and features all the things we're used to. Again, all the focusing, all the exposure, face detection, and more. Now around the camera is a removable accessory panel. Samsung has actually designed a cover which snaps right into this opening and that uh, basically acts as a cover for the front glass as well as a prop. Behind the cover, we'll find some of the product information, and there are metal panels at either end of the opening, which appear to be part of the speaker assembly. Now, along the front, we'll find our display flanked by a large set of stereo speakers, which face the user. This makes for one of the best sounding tablets I've used. Uh, so I really like this design. You also see this design on the Galaxy Note 10.1, which I also really like. Now at the top center of the display, we'll find a 1.9 megapixel front facing camera, which is actually slightly off center because the ambient light sensor is off to the left. Now at the bottom edge, we'll find another popular Nexus feature, which is an LED light, which flashes when you have some notifications that have popped up while the screen was off. At the top left corner, we'll find our volume rocker and power button. Near that, on the left edge, we'll find a micro USB port for charging and a headphone jack. Now, the edge of the tablet tapers down toward the bottom, and at the center, uh, you'll find a magnetic charging port, although there are currently no accessories to support this feature. Now, on the right edge, we'll find our micro HDMI output for connecting an HDTV. Setting up the Nexus 10 is very simple. Just hold the power button and let it boot up. First, we just need to select our language, sign into our wireless network, log in or create a Google account, and agree or disagree to a few options such as enabling location services, and that's it, and we're good to go. The display is perhaps the Nexus 10's most important feature. This is an LCD PLS display with a screen resolution of 2560 by 1600, which is good for 300 pixels per inch, which beats the iPad's Retina display, which has 264 PPI. Although the specs sound substantially improved, the differences are not really noticeable in real world, and both displays look exceptional. Text is extremely crisp and sharp, even at the smallest settings or smallest font settings, and the pixels are not discernible in any way. You can't see any pixels believe me. The screen is bright with vivid colors, with deep contrast, with great off-axis viewing angle, so it, uh, it's a really good looking display. Now, the Nexus 10 launches with Android 4.2, which is the newest version of Jelly Beam. This brings some important new features such as lock screen widgets, which you can add by tapping the plus icon. You can continue adding more widgets, which you can then scroll through in sort of a carousel viewer. To launch them, just tap the widget and swipe to unlock. 
You can also launch Google Now from the lock screen just by swiping up on the circle toward the bottom of the screen. Now on the Nexus 7 and 10, you have two drop-down menus. Swiping down from the screen on the left side by the notifications gives you your notification panel. Now swiping down on the right side near your clock and battery indicators gets you straight to quick settings, which is where you can manage some of the most frequently used options such as screen brightness, networking, Bluetooth, and more. The Nexus 7 and 10 also feature multiple account logins, so multiple users can use this device without affecting what the other person is doing. To enable this, go to Settings, Users, and Add Account. Now, the user will need to go through the same set of process you went through when you set up the tablet for the first time. Once complete, you can now use the tablet as if it were your own, so you can install your own apps, you can sync your own information such as calendars, bookmarks, uh, you can even change your own wallpaper, that sort of thing. You will also see all the users appear on the lock screen, so you can quickly launch into any of the accounts from the lock screen. Now, another big feature here is a swipe keyboard, which works system-wide. Here you can type a message in by tracing your finger to the letters on the keyboard. The software can predict what you intend to type, and you'll see the words appear on the screen while you're swiping it. It works extremely well, although this feature makes less sense on a two-handed tablet, and I kind of wish Google had integrated a thumb keyboard like the iPad or even the Galaxy Note 10.1 from Samsung. The camera UI app has also been completely redesigned, so you kind of have a new tap to focus uh, animation. Uh, so you'll see a little, these little green indicators let you know when the uh, image is in focus. You also have pinch to zoom with additional UI information. You can also tap anywhere on the screen to bring up your settings and to quickly toggle through them, such as launching HDR, changing your cameras, modifying the flash settings, exposure, etc. We also have the new sphere mode, which allows you to take a 360 degree panorama. I've already done this demo on the Nexus 4 and the principles are the same. The camera uses the gyroscope and accelerometer to coach you uh, through the process. So basically you line up the camera with these uh, blue dots in real time. And the camera will take the photos for you and once you're done, they will knit them together and you know color correct them and white balance them and everything like that. And you can now scroll through it in your gallery. So it works actually pretty well. Now in terms of camera performance, quality is pretty good for a tablet. So it's right up there with the iPad, for example. And, but it's really nice to have an LED flash, especially for stills. Video is recorded at 1080p and looks pretty good with great color accuracy and exposure compensation. Now just to demonstrate the front-facing camera, which I'm shooting with right now, this is a 1.9 megapixel sensor capable of recording video at 720p. This is pretty typical territory for most front-facing cameras. You have to have at least... HD in there somewhere. So we have 720p. 1.9 is better than a lot of sensors, which are usually around 1.3. So it does a pretty good job. And you can even take photos while you're filming just by tapping the screen. While recording video, you can also snap images just by tapping the screen. Now this feature removes the ability to tap to focus. So the camera does this continuously and automatically it seems to do it very well. The Gallery app has also added a lot of new editing options. This includes the standard array of effects and even borders, kind of similar to Instagram. We also have cropping, rotation, straightening, and mirroring. We even have tons of color correction options that in many ways resemble a full-fledged photo editing app right in the system. Now to the right, you'll find your complete editing history, which you can cycle through and tap on and see what changes have been made. And you can reset all this to get it back to the original photo. Gaming on the Nexus 10 is also very impressive with that large high-res display, and the audio quality is unrivaled with those stereo speakers, so the gaming experience is actually surprisingly good on the Nexus 10. Overall, I'm very impressed by the Nexus 10. The display is one of the best on the market, and Android 4.2 runs quickly and silky smooth on this hardware. There are some new tablet-friendly features here with Android 4.2, and the Google ecosystem is definitely one of the best features. The design is lightweight and thin with durable, soft-touch materials with an ergonomic design, which makes it extremely comfortable to use over a long period of time. And the speaker quality makes this one of the best tablets for movie watching and gaming. Now, the biggest issue I have right now with the Nexus 10 is charging. The Nexus 10 has a very large 9,000 mAh battery, and charging via micro USB is very slow. It can take up to eight hours or more to charge the tablet from empty. On average, I see about 10% an hour. The solution to this is likely in the uh, magnetic charging port at the bottom, but right now there are no accessories for this. Now, a significant hurdle for the Nexus 10 is the lack of tablet-optimized apps in the Android ecosystem. Now, every app will scale to fit the screen, but most do not take advantage of the real estate like, for example, iPad apps do. However, games, web browsing, movies, reading texts, 
all look great on this high-res display. So in the end, this is without a doubt my favorite Android tablet available and I highly recommend it, especially for people who are already in the Android ecosystem and want to transfer that to their tablet. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.